Okay, this video is going to go over strategies to figure out where the Nash equilibrium is if you're given a payout matrix. So first what I'm going to do is set up your standard payout matrix just so you can remember what it looks like. I'm going to call this guy a column player. And then this guy on the side we will call row player. I know, I know. Confusing. Uh, we'll have the two choices they can make. So here I'm going to go with high and low. And then here I will also have high and low. And then we will get our payoff matrix. So when I talk about finding the Nash equilibrium, this is sort of the setup we have. So I'm going to fill this out uh, real quick. I'm going to make this guy blue. And I'll have his payoffs be here. And then we can make the row player red. And I will have her payoffs be here. So this probably looks familiar based on some of the homework assignments or textbooks that you've been given. So you look at this and you're like, okay, all right. I have this information here. I have two players. They each have two choices. They have associated payouts. Higher is better. Now where is Nash equilibrium? What's going to happen? Okay, so first what we have to do is figure out what the dominant strategy is. And the dominant strategy means that regardless of what the other person chooses to do, you will choose the same thing. Uh, so you may be asking, okay, that's great, dominant strategy, we'll figure that out. Uh, but first, where did these values come from, in case you're curious? Uh, what I'm going to assume here is that we have a $10 market share, and then they have high or low advertising amounts they can choose to do. So if they choose to advertise the high amount, it costs $4. If they choose to advertise the low amount, it costs $2. And I assume that if they choose the same advertising amount, that they split the market share. However, if one of them does the high amount and the other does the low amount, then the high advertiser wins the total market share. So you can see column player blue. If they advertise high, they get $10 minus 4 for a payout of 6. Our row player red gets a market share of zero dollars but they still have to pay two dollars in advertising so they get a negative two. If they both do high they split the market share five five they each pay four dollars resulting in one and one. So if you're curious where those values came from that's why. But now let's look at the dominant strategy and first let's focus on blue or the column player. So we're looking at blue and they can choose either to advertise a high amount or advertise a low amount. And so what we want to do to see if there's a dominant strategy or not is assume the row player chooses high advertising. Okay. So if the row player chooses high advertising, the column player has a choice between a payout of one or negative two. Which are they going to choose? Well, they're going to choose one, obviously, because they'd rather make one dollar than lose two dollars. Now, assume that the row player is going to choose a low amount of advertising. They have a choice between making six dollars, high advertising, or three dollars, low advertising. So again, they choose to do high advertising, and they get the six dollar payout. So this is a clear example of a dominant strategy. Regardless of what the row player does, it's in the column player's best interest to choose a high amount of advertising. Now let's consider the row player. 
Imagine the column player decides to do high advertising, okay? So the row player in this instance can either do high advertising or low advertising. Do they want one or negative two? Well, obviously they'll choose one. Now imagine the column player does low advertising. Do they want six or three? Well, obviously they want six. So we can see here that high is also a dominant strategy for the row player. So what ends up happening in this case is we see that this cell right here, if one cell results in both dominant strategy outcomes, it is a Nash equilibrium. So in this case, what we needed to do was figure out, okay, what is the dominant strategy for each player? In this case, both dominant strategies resulted in them choosing the high advertising amount. And if both of them choose the high advertising amount, regardless of what the other player does, that will be the Nash equilibrium. Now, there are some caveats. Uh, there may not be a Nash equilibrium. Uh, imagine I change some of these values around and the dominant strategy for the column player was low. Then what would happen in this situation is that the Nash equilibrium would change potentially based on what the values were and what the row player ended up deciding to do. So in order for this strategy to make sense or in order for there to be a Nash equilibrium regardless, uh, both of the players have to have a dominant strategy and that dominant strategy has to result in them both getting that stable cell.